Horse Patrol, it's so memorable. The Raven went off, flew back and forth, and uh, I guess nothing much happened. Then he sent out the Dove to see where the war was receded, and the Dove, finding nowhere to perch, returned to the Ark, for there was still water around. This is all y'all with the trail. And then he uh, brought it back like a dove keeper in a, one of those little sort of cage situations that they keep doves in. Very graphic. In seven more days, and he sent the dove out again. And then finally the dove came back with an olive branch in line 11. So Noah knew that the flood was over. Again, his days are seven. So it's 40, 40, and seven. He waited seven more days. He sent out the dove and returned no more. That's the end of the always. Back to the other was line 13. It was the current first year of Noah's life, the first month, the first day of the month, the water cut up in the earth. <laughs> back to the August. Noah lifted the back of the hatch and looked out. The surface of the ground was dry. That hooks up with line 12. He waited seven more days, sent out the dove, and now returned no more. Noah lifted back the hatch of the ark, looked out. <laughs> the second the surface of the earth was dry. Back to the Elohist. In the second month, the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. You see, two times it's mentioned the same thing. So the guy's just putting up the two narratives, splicing them together, putting one next to the other. So let's put, where does that go? 600 first year of Noah's life, the first month, the first day of the month, the water dried up in the earth. In the second month, the 27th day of the month, the earth was dry. Okay, now we have the, uh, the outcome of this uh, story, finally. Line 15, we're continuing the God narrative. Then God said, No, come out of the ark, you yourself, your wife, son, well, son's wife, all the animals with you, all things of flesh, word, birds, animals, reptiles, call on the earth, let them swarm on the earth. There's the swarming motif of the creation story, first narrative. Let them be fruitful and multiply, that's the first creation story. So Noah went out with his son's wife, and his son's wife, and all the wild beasts, and all the cattle, all the birds, all the reptiles that crawl on the earth, and one kind after another. No sacrifice. No need for the extra animals. Two by two. Line 20, Yahweh. Noah built an altar for Yahweh. Yahweh's narrative. That's why he needs more animals. That hooks up with, let me see where I can give you where that hooks up with Hebrews creepers. Uh, I think line 13, Noah lifted back the hatch of the ark, looked out at the surface of the ground, and it was dry. Noah built an altar for y'all. And choosing from all the clean animals and all the clean birds, he offered burnt offerings on the altar. He's burning up everything. <laughs> all the clean animals and birds he's getting worked up with. And here's Yahweh, the lover of meat and animals and flesh. Always smell the appeasing fragrance, the fat burning on the fire. Same as with the Cain and Abel story. He always said to himself, "Okay, now I'm 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 appeased. I appreciate it. Never again will I curse the earth because of man, because his heart contrives evil from his infancy. Never again will I strike down the living things that I have done." Can we get a moral like in the Adam and Eve story? As long as the earth lasts, sowing, reaping, cold and hot, summer, winter. The days and nights shall cease no more. That's the moral in the Yahweh story. Let's just finish before you go home here. I'm sorry to keep you, but I'd like to get a good place to stop. Chapter 9, 1 to 17 is the outcome of the Elohist priestly story. God bless Noah and his son, saying to be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth. We, 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 we know that that's part of the first creation story, the creation story, uh, the, the, uh, the priestly narrative. The terror and dread of all the wild beasts, that hooks up with uh, all the wild beasts of the earth, all the birds, all the reptiles of 19. Uh, they hand it over to every living plant, crawling things to provide you for no less than foliage plants. I give you everything with this except you must not eat the flesh with life on it. That is to say the blood. And I will demand, so this one is uh, don't eat the blood of anything. Priestly, uh, not kosher food, not eating blood. Uh, taking the blood out of the uh, meat before you eat it because blood was considered the life. I will demand an account also of blood vengeance of any man who takes blood from his fellow man. He who sheds blood shall have his blood shed by man. For in the image of God, man was made. Be fruitful, multiply, team over the earth. 
I will establish my covenant with you, with your descendants, with the birds, cattle, kind of wild. I will establish my covenant with you. Nothing of flesh will be swept away again. Again, the same promise, but in different circumstances. In the August, I will never again strike down any living thing because he liked the sacrifice. In the August, I don't know what the reason is, but he decides to be a good fellow now, God. And uh, as long as man doesn't eat the flesh with, uh, with a blood in it, I will not destroy the earth. And here's the sign of the covenant uh, that every living being will know for generations. I set my bow in the clouds. Uh, it's a covenant between me and the earth. When I gather clouds over the earth and uh, you see the rainbow, I recall my covenant. And so the water shall never again come from flood to destroy the earth. When the bow is in the clouds, I shall see it and call it to mine. And God, every living creature, every kind that is found on earth, will be reminded of to me. And God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant. I've established between myself and every thing on the earth. So the rainbow sign belongs to the second narrative, the priestly narrative. The sacrifice belongs to the Yahweh narrative. My friends, that's tough. Very difficult. Sorry to keep you, but I thought we'd get a good place to stop. Apologize.